Hi guys, today I'm going to try and fit a diesel heater to my van under the front driver's seat. Now I'm not going to fit it completely, I'm not going to fit the diesel tank today and I'm not going to actually plumb it into the onboard diesel tank. I just want to get it in, get all the wiring sorted and then at a later date I'll fit the uh, the fuel tank as I'm using a separate fuel tank and I'm going to mount it somewhere different in the van um, in one of my cupboards but anyway I'll show you what I'm doing so far today so that's the diesel heater I'm using it's a uh, two kilowatt and it's the uh, the genuine two kilowatt um, if you look on eBay and Various other places they list them as two kilo to two kilowatt diesel heaters, but they tend to be five or wound down versions of a five kilowatt, so they're a lot larger and you can't actually get them under the seat. Um, so what I've got to do is take the seat out to make it easier. What I've done down here, I've took the uh, the bolts out of the handbrake, so the handbrake will come away. It's still on so the, uh, the van won't move anywhere, but I have put it in gear just to be on the safe side. Um, they're T40 um, sockets uh, there, and then there are two bolts at the front of the seat, 19mm I think I used. Uh, but there's two bolts there. Um, remember if you've got a pretensioner or airbag or anything like that, make sure you disconnect the wires. Some people say make sure you isolate the battery but I'll just leave the ignition switched off and I don't put the key in the, the ignition so I know there's going to be no power going to that obviously if you do turn the power on it'll raise a, uh, a warning light on the dashboard um, I have got an ODB uh, reader so I can plug it in and reset any codes if, if for ex any reason it did come on right as you can see I've removed the seat there were two little pieces of wire on the seat going across them. There was a storage box that clipped onto that. I've removed those just so as the heater can be fitted properly in the right place. Now what I did, I've cut a square out in the, uh, the rubber matting, on the plastic matting, and I've bought a toilet plate. Now obviously I don't want the toilet plate actually fitting flush to the floor so I've made a small wooden mount I had some, uh, sorry about that, 4 by one spare so obviously when I cut the, uh, the circle out this will be glued into place and then the toilet plate will be fitted into the hole screwed through the wood into the steel work but what I'll do um, I'll put plenty of sealer around there also on this side I'll put a lot of sealer because it's raised slightly due to the uh, the way the floor um, the floor's got these ridges going across basically to uh, strengthen the floor and stop it um, flexing it keeps it so obviously it's slightly raised here, plus you've got this same deadening on there, which is raising it up about another eighth of an inch. So right, what I actually did, uh, I marked it out, put a couple of pilot holes through and shone my torch through, got underneath to have a look, see where it was, see whether it was in the right place. Um, they came directly underneath, because there's a, uh, a chassis rail that runs across this way. So now I've just put another pilot hole in and I'll get the, uh, the saw in and I'll cut that out. Right, as you can see, that's the hole cut out. I've scraped some of this uh, crappy sound deadening off. Um, so it'll, the wooden, the wooden um, bit that I'm putting in It'll sit a little, little slightly flush. I'm going to put some um, oh, close cell foam on there anyway, so as it can press it, press it down. It's going to be a, an airtight seal, stop any drafts blowing through. 
but obviously all I've got to do now is just uh, file any of the sharp edges down and um, put some amorite paint on there. Right, I'll crack on. As you can see, um, I've got the hole out, painted it, and what I did, I put the uh, little bit of uh, 4B1, well it's uh, 8B1 now, um, put that in, screwed it all down, put some sealer all underneath, and then filled any of the gaps between the wood and the floor, and uh, screwed it all down so it's uh, nice and secure, it ain't going anywhere. Um, what I'll do now, I'll put another little piece of cloud cell foam over the top of this um, and then it's ready to have the uh, the toilet plate fitted, ready for the heater. As you can see now I'm just prepping the heater to fit in. So there's the actual toilet plate just on there and I've threaded it through. Now these nuts, they're not proper locking nuts. The idea of them is they've got like a little um, a little groove in them. So as you tighten it, it cuts into the steel to stop it undoing. But um, what I've done, I've used some of the uh, the P, yeah, the polyurethane adhesive. Now that's the stuff that I used when I was um, sticking the board in and everything, and I've just put a little bit on the nuts and as I've tightened it down basically it acts like, acts like Loctite and uh, I can't be bothered to go out and buy a, a tube of Loctite just for four nuts so this will do the same job it'll hold them in place stop them coming off now obviously I've got it all prepped now, the kit that I ordered came with that skanky green silicon hose now you can use it um, but I wouldn't recommend it because as the pump pulsates it needs the pressure to go through the atomizer to squirt the diesel. Now obviously when you connect this up to the pump um, with it being silicone and slightly uh, thicker diameter, internal diameter, you haven't actually got that pressure there. Now what I'll probably do is I may use this from my diesel tank I don't know yet I've actually ordered some of the um, the white nylon now this is the uh, the shitty green cable um, you can use it um, from the diesel tank run it from your diesel tank up to the filter if you want to because it's a little bit more flexible the only thing you've got to watch is it kinks whereas the nylon stuff it, it only kinks if you bend it severely this stuff um, I don't know to be honest I don't think I'm going to use it I've ordered a complete new line it comes with the uh, the rubber um, to attach to the filter so you've got a length of rubber you cut it down so obviously this is black rubber you'd cut two inches push it onto the filter, put your nylon hardcore inside and then clip it up. Now, as you can see I've um, got the heater already prepped, that's ready to drop through, that's the inlet. The inlet, it's easy to work out, the side that blows out is going to be hot air so that's the exhaust, the side that sucks in is cold air so that's the cold air inlet, that is your diesel inlet so obviously what I'll do um, when the nylon house arrives, it's due to come tomorrow or the day after, um, I'll set it all up. But the way this is set up now, I can literally drop this through the hole over there in my van, get it all secure, secure the pipes up uh, underneath the van, and then when the, um, the nylon pipe comes, I can connect all that up ready. Right, now that's the diesel heater all installed um, mounted on the plate plate put through the hole and screwed down I've actually used longer screws it doesn't only screw into the wood I've pre-drilled 
into the floor as well so it goes through and these screws just go through the floor a little bit and I've just put some paint uh, on the underside to prevent any um, any rust um, so that's all ready um, actually I'll put the chair back put the chair back that's the inlet side that's the outlet side um, I may just put the put the T-piece on I mean I've had this fitted to use as a an auxiliary heater I've actually purchased a um, Truma 4E um, blow air and water heater that's going to be the main one um, basically I've purchased this one to use just as a as a backup and basically to bang some heat into the cab area when the windows are froze up um, obviously I go to work at 2 o'clock half past 2 in the morning and in the winter months it takes some time for these um, vans to warm up so I can just whack the diesel heater on and uh, melt any ice which is what I used to do in my previous van I had a VW transporter used to do the same thing but uh, I say with this diesel heater I'm um, having the trimmer fitted as a blow air one but um, if it gets a little bit cold um, rather, or I want to save a little bit of gas I can put this on as well just put it on a low heat so obviously it'll help the trimmer out and I won't be using so much gas now then that's the underside that's where the, uh, the plate comes through and obviously you've got the uh, the exhaust fitted onto the one side and the air inlet which I've just routed through and cable tied that up out of the way and then the uh, the exhaust uh, let's just have a look, move back a bit the exhaust comes through and um, basically this part here that's part of the uh, the sill from the floor it ain't actually the floor of the van part of the sill, inner sill, so I've uh, glued the um, the bracket and screwed it so obviously so now no water can get through there I've used little galvanised self tapping screws that's all sealed and uh, screwed in so there's no water going to get in, there's going to be no water ingress, no rust and then I've just bolted the exhaust just on there so when the uh, the nylon hose fuel hose comes, I'll literally connect it up uh, onto the um, the fuel pipe connection, and then route the route the fuel pipe through. I'm not sure where I'm putting the pump yet, but I say I'll do that one in another video. At the moment, this is basically how you'll fit it. So I know that's all fitted in. Uh, I'll put the seat back in, and then I'll do another video when I actually uh, connect the pipe up. But the way this is now, it's safe to drive. Um, can put the seat back in, connect the um, yeah seat belt pre tensioner up, get it all fitted down, um, and then the next stages. As soon as this nylon nylon uh, fuel hose comes. Sort out where I'm going to put the tank. Um, what I may do is just uh, mount the tank to the side of the van as a temporary um, fix until I uh, get all the van built out and decide where the actual tank, fuel tank is going to be mounted. But so I'll, I'll get the pump mounted underneath, get it all wired in. Um, temporarily, I'll connect it up to the uh, the vehicle battery. But obviously, once all the electrics are sorted. I'll wire it all into the leisure battery side because obviously I've got more power there and uh, I don't want to be flattening the starter battery out. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video so far. Uh, if you've liked it, um, just give me a thumbs up. If it's uh, helped you out in any way, um, subscribe. There'll be a few more videos coming. Well, quite a few more videos coming. Um, so, uh, Thanks. Any answer, any questions? Then just drop them down in the comments, and I'll uh, answer them as soon as I can. Thanks a lot, guys. Get back to you later.